In this knife talk video, we're going to look at this knife. It is the Cold Steel Pro Light. So the Pro Light series is a series of budget knives that Cold Steel has done. They actually had a few Pro Light knives, uh, folding knives before these ones, but these are the current ones. Um, so they have this one, which is a Tonto version, and then they have a Drop Point, and what they call, I think, a Sport version, which is kind of like almost a harpoon um, style blade with a kind of oval hole in the handle to, o or I'm sorry, hole in the blade to open it. Um, I considered getting that one, the, the one with the, the sport, uh, with the oval hole in the handle, um, just because I thought that might be a little bit more easy to open and close, but I decided to go with the classic cold steel Tonto. Um, so they have a couple different options. They also have um, both this color, blue, and uh, black. So this the box shows the black. And then they might have some other colors. I, I feel like I've seen them in other colors, but I'm not super sure. Um, but this is an inexpensive knife. So to start out, like I say, it's a budget knife and they're normally around 20, maybe $25 shipped. Um, I got this, they were on sale at Smoky Mountain Knife Works for um, under $15 uh, plus shipping and I got it with another knife. So it came out to about $15 shipped. Um, and I think that it's definitely a good deal at that price. So to talk about the, the components of the design, um, as I said, it's a Tonto blade shape. So it's the kind of Americanized Tonto that Cold Steel is known for. So it has a slightly curved edge that, ha that has a hollow grind behind it. And then up at the tip, um, there's, there's a point where the two edges meet. And then there's a straight edge going to the spine with a, a flat grind. So that's for stronger, uh, you know, more strength at the tip. This is for better slicing. And I like the, the Cold Steel style Tonto. I think that it's a nice blade shape for EDC. I'm not super into the tactical, you know, I don't use knives for tactical things. Um, but I think that it's a good EDC blade. Um, the reason for that is because it, the, the um, hollow grind does make it a good slicer here on this straight edge. So you can cut cardboard well with these. You can um, also use this point to open packages and things like that. It makes for a good kind of um, letter opener style uh, usages. And then this flat area here is good if you need to, you know, pierce into something um, or uh, scraping. You can use this really well like a, uh, like a, you know, a um, chisel. So I think that it has its uses, this blade shape. As for the handle shape, it's it's kind of a classic, you know, folding tactical knife handle shape. A little bit of, you know, um, molding, uh, shaping for your fingers. I, I could do without it. I think that it would probably look better without this bump here. There's actually a too small bump. There's a bump and then a little bit more of a bump here and then that. I think that it would probably look and feel better if it was just straight, but it, I don't know, it might be too simple or something. I don't, I don't know why they always decide to put those kinds of things on knives, but it still feels good in the hand. Um, so you can see that two of my fingers fit into this area and then the other two fit into here. It doesn't really crowd my pinky or anything like often happens for me on knives. So it definitely has enough handle space. Um, feels good in the hand. It's not super, super grippy because it is just injection molded plastic uh, with a little bit of a rough pattern. You're not, you know, it's not G10, it's not peel ply G10 where you're gonna, you know, your hand really locks in or anything, but it's good enough. For normal use, this is gonna be totally fine. Um, and it does have these kind of scallops that doesn't really do anything. Um, Cold Steel just likes to put those on. I, I don't think that really, really provides any traction, um, but you know, it's what they do. Uh, then on this side, you can see that it has a reversible tip up pocket clip, pretty much a classic Cold Steel pocket clip. Um, pretty much the same as any other of their knives. It is reversible, which is nice if you're left-handed, and a back lock is a um, ambidextrous lock. Uh, it has a lanyard hole, which I don't use, but some people like that. Um, and then, speaking of the lock, it is the uh, Cold Steel Andrew Demko Triad Lock. So the Triad Lock is basically a back lock, sometimes also a mid lock, uh, with a stop pin added between the lock and the tang of the blade. 
So the blade actually pushes against that, that stop pin rather than the lock bar. And it does make it a little bit stronger and a little bit more secure. I like the uh, triad lock. I think that it's a nice lock. I'm also a fan of normal back locks, especially Spyderco's updated um, back locks with the better geometry. So I'm a fan of the triad lock. And I think on a budget knife, it's nice to be able to get that really solid, dependable lock for a, a really, really affordable price. So that's one of the big positives of this knife. Now, as cold steel triad locks go, it's not the best one I've had. Um, so comparing this to, I don't have another um, cold steel right now, uh, other than the micro recon, which isn't a great comparison. Um, but it is definitely less smooth than say the, the code four or the tall war that I've had. They generally are drop closed. They're really, really well made knives, but uh, cold steel's higher end knives. This one, not so much. You can shake it until it kind of drops and then close it one handed. And sometimes you can push it like so. Um, so, you know, you can close it with one hand. You can definitely open it with one hand. It's just not the smoothest of, of cold steel knives. Um, it's, it's, you know, passable for sure for this price. Now, the one really downside to this knife for me is that this uh, is German 4116 steel. So Cold Steel used to call this Krupp 4116, and then it kind of came out that um, that company had, uh, you know, aligned themselves with the, uh, you know, um, basically the Nazi party in, uh, in during World War II. Now, that that's, you know, several generations ago and I don't know if that's something that they need to kind of hide um you know that they're getting steel from this company certainly by buying steel from Krupp manufacturing or whatever it was I don't think that they're supporting Nazism in any way um but it seems like they have changed from saying that it's Krupp 4116 to saying that it's German 4116. Um, I don't even know for sure that that's why they did that, but I think it's an interesting little tidbit how, um, you know, something that I think is a little bit, you know, not not a necessary reason to to change your your um, nomenclature could come out and uh, you know change the way a company um, advertises something. Certainly, uh, if it if it has any um, associations for you watching this that that are negative i understand that because you know that's not a good thing that they um <clears throat> supplied steel and everything to the nazi party but uh i don't think that cold steel was doing a disservice to anyone um other than the fact that it's not a great steel by you know using buying and using crop 4116 steel but anyway seems like they don't use that term anymore they call it german 416 and like I say, if there's really a bad side to that, it's just that it's not a good steel. Um, so if German 4116 steel uh, is not a great edge holding steel. Um, a great comparison or a good comparison is 8CR13 MOV. So the steel that you know Kershaw uses in a lot of their Chinese made knives and lots of companies use 8CR13 MOV, there's less carbon in this steel, German 4116. There's more chromium, so whereas 8CR13 MOV can definitely rust sometimes, this tends to not rust. I've used this steel in some of Cold Steel's um, Pro-Lite fixed blades, or they're like whatever their budget fixed blades are called, and it, it doesn't hold an edge super well. Um, it holds a serviceable edge, kind of like I would say like a you know, big box store kitchen knife, um, but it definitely doesn't rust easily. So if that's something that you care about, which I think for, for most people, um, you know, in general, not necessarily knife uh, enthusiasts, but most people in general, it would be a fine steel. But that is a downside for me. And I actually got this knife and I'm going to, to give it away. I got it as a giveaway knife, um, giving it to someone for Christmas. So um, for them, I think that it's going to be more than a fine steel and, uh, you know, I think that they'll like it. I think that the big upsides to this knife are the price, especially if you can get it on sale, like I say, for under $15. And then the design, it is a nice design, and you get that um, really solid 
Cold Steel Demco Triad Lock and the classic Cold Steel Tonto in an inexpensive package. So if that's something you're looking for, the Cold Steel Pro Light might be a good option. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it. You can subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this and don't forget to go out and do good.